So rolls on the 1960s and so rolls on our series investigating the greatest records of that decade. We're leaving now the part of the countdown where records are on it because they're interesting and great and moving into the part where we're finding records which are great and interesting. Increasingly the task of dividing and ranking and separating each record becomes incrementally more difficult the further we progress. I hope you find the presentation enjoyable. It gives you pause to think about that music and it prompts from you comments which feature the typical intelligent discourse that one tends to find in this community. Enjoy. In at number 200 is The Hunter Gets Captured by the Game by the Marvelettes. The Marvelettes never got the breaks they deserved at Motown, despite delivering them one of their most crucial early hits in Please Mr. Postman. This song is a prime slab of Smokey Robinson, melodically inventive and lyrically tremendously clever. 199 Bagaboo by Laurel Aitken. Laurel Aitken was the original rude boy and to all intents and purposes is still the OG of Jamaican badassery. Bagaboo is his wry eyed view of the abandonment of masculinity. Next up is Going to a Go Go by Smokey Robinson and the Miracles. Pure party music, seldom done better or sung sweeter. The titular album is fantastic, too, possibly one of my all time favourites. 197 Santa Claus is Coming to Town by Bill Evans. The doomed Dark Prince of Jazz put some twinkle in his tinkle for this festive folder roll. In at 196, Man Can't Get No Satisfaction by the Mighty Clouds of Joy, a red-hot jubilee gospel group that had the same tailors as the Temptations? How could they go wrong? 195, High Heel Sneakers by Tommy Tucker. Covered by anyone who's anyone and everybody who was nobody, this is the quintessential garage rocker. So it's odd to hear Tucker's slinky, razor sharp original, and even odder considering it was on chess, the home of the most barrel house and rumble tumble of blues. 194 Monkey Man by Toots and the Maytals. Toots and the Maytals are widely acknowledged as the group that gave reggae music its name with their 1968 hit, Do the Reggae. Monkey Man, fantastically racist as it seems, is their most enduring song. Shake a Tail Feather by the Five Do Tones. I suspect Ray Charles sang this in the Blues Brothers at Steve Cropper's request because he's a noted fan of his fellow St. Louisians. St. Louisians? St. Louisians? The Five Deutones. This is the original and roughest and best of the versions of this beloved party classic. The Race Is On, George Jones. Just the possum being the possum. Back in the mid 1960s, he still had some holdover of his love of rockabilly. This features classic Pappy Daly production. And as he sings, when I live in fear of waking up each morning and finding that you're gone from me. That's classic. George Jones emoting. More Motown with Don't Look Back by The Temptations. The Temptations were the emperors of Motown. The best dancers, the best dressers, and they had two or three of the best singers on the label. And in the beginning, they had songs written and produced by Smokey Robinson. And this is one of the best. How could they go wrong? How could they have gone so terribly wrong? Next in is New Orleans by Gary U.S. Bond. Unapologetic rock and roll from Bonds, who was in a rare lapse of bad taste, beloved by befuddled village idiot of rock Bruce Springsteen. 189, We Travel the Spaceways by Sun Ra. How weird do you want to get? Really weird? Okay. Really, really weird? Then Sun Ra's got you covered. Any weirder, you're on your own. Sun Ra released five albums in 1967. Lord knows how freaky the other four want to get. 
Back to Detroit, back to Motown with The Love I Saw In You Was Just A Mirage, back to Smokey Robinson and The Miracles. Why has time forgotten Smokey Robinson while it lords Paul Simon and Bob Dylan? Smokey was as good a songwriter as both of them and could sing either of them under the table. The B-side of this, Come Spy With Me, is pretty great too. 187, Hit The Road Jack, Ray Charles. Rave on, brother Ray. Of course, there wouldn't be a Ray without the Raylettes, and here they give as good as they get. 186, Just Like a Woman, Bob Dylan. What? Why is this only 186? This is one of Dylan's most musically interesting records. It's a softer rewrite of Like a Rolling Stone, much criticised in certain feminist circles, although you could say the woman has objectified herself rather than Dylan objectifying her. It can be as beautiful or as brutal as you want it to be. Wonderful World by Sam Cooke. Sometimes I find this song with its sheer joy and innocence quite overwhelming. Suffice to say Sam Cooke is the only singer in the 1960s who for me approaches Dusty Springfield. Had he been permitted to live, he could truly have done anything. He could have been president. He was Sam Cooke. 184. Susanna's Still Alive by Dave Davies. Released as a Dave Davies solo single, it's still the kinks as the backing ground with the ever querulous Ray Davies as producer. A jolly slice of swinging London as seen through the slightly less jaundiced eye of the slightly less jaundiced Davies brother. 183 Get Carter by Roy Budd The Human League did a cover of this, but it must be said it was redundant. This piece is icy, bleak, post-industrial perfection. And not a lot of people know that. <laughs> God, I'm an idiot. 182, I Fought the Law by the Bobby Fuller Four. The kind of top 40s fodder that the 1960s is unthinkable of without. 181, Trouble Coming Every Day by Frank Zappa. Again, why isn't there more Frank Zappa on this list? This recoil in horror at the Watts Riot is the soundtrack to the anarchy that swept America 45 years after it was released as a clear and prescient foretelling. Ziggy Marley says his dad, Bob, uttered the title of this song as his dying words. Eric Morris had innumerable hits in Jamaica, none of which penetrated into the outside world, but you could stack his work up against anyone's in Jamaica in the 1960s, including and especially Bob Marley's. 179, Sorry Suzanne by The Hollies. Here's a controversial hot take. If George Harrison had have quit the Beatles at any point, I'd have replaced him with Holly's guitarist Tony Hicks. A really underrated guitarist seen to great advantage on this cut. 178. Heartbreaker, Led Zeppelin. Why not more Led Zeppelin on this list? Well, because I don't much care for them actually. It must be said though, this one is kinda nifty. A Fender Telecaster and a Vox Tone Bender. That's all it took for Jimmy Page to get a history-making job done here. First Trip by Herbie Hancock From the wondrous and delightful Speak Like a Child album, Herbie weaves a mind-bending spell. Drummer Mickey Roker is the unheralded hero here, playing out of his skin. Back to England, back to swinging London, back to 1966 with the semi-detached suburban Mr. James by Manfred Mann. The best Ray Davies song, not written by Ray Davies. A quick one while he's away by The Who. The alleged jewel in the crown of the confused and often substandard A Quick One album, we find a song that is largely cobbled together rubbish and is really redeemed by Entwistle and Moon's brilliant playing. Often referred to as a mini opera, it isn't, but it is good humoured enough, uh, backing vocals, cello, 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 and different enough to warrant consideration. Of course, So Sad About Us was the jewel in the crown of a quick one. 174, The Sidewinder, Lee Morgan. Poor old Lee Morgan. 
Art Blakey protege, then a hopeless junkie homeless on the streets of New York, makes a big comeback only to be murdered by his common-law wife at Slug's Jazz Cafe in 1972. He was only 33 years old. The Sidewinder is the kind of song that people who say they can't stand jazz get down to anyway. It's that good. The House That Jack Built, Aretha Franklin. Listen to this twice. First is the whole performance, then, if you can, block out Aretha and check out how unremittingly tight this band is. Actually, listen to it three times and just zoom in on Roger Hawkins, the drummer. By golly, he was good. What the World Needs Now, Dionne Warwick. When Bert Bacharach first offered this song to Dionne Warwick in 1965, she turned it down. So Jackie DeShannon cut it and bagged a top 10 hit with it. Warwick begrudgingly cut it in 1966 and predictably it flopped. While to Shannon's version is fresh-faced and enjoyable, there's something about the way Warwick understands Bacharach's intricate sense for arrangements and how she negotiates it with great vocal dexterity. Blam Blam Fever by the Valentines, produced by the inimitable Sonia Pottinger. This is an example of the sense of political and cultural reflection that was a staple of Jamaican music. Pay careful attention, this is not a reggae number. It belongs to the earlier style of rock steady. 170. Once a Day by Connie Smith. Connie Smith, one of a family of 15 children, was the first woman to have a debut Billboard Country number one single with this song, where it sat for eight weeks, thus setting a record for longevity at number one that took 50 years to break. Written by Whisper and Bill Anderson, this is an essential song for any country singer's fake book. 169, Stay A While by Dusty Springfield. This isn't just Dusty hollering at her soulful best. Check out the maniac drummer Bobby Graham. In the Ghetto by Elvis Presley. It teeters on the edge of parodyable territory, but it's rescued with a heartfelt, soulful, yet honey smooth vocal from the man who was still the king. 167, Drinkin' Again by Frank Sinatra. Sinatra's albums in the 60s were a real mixed bag. So how is it from the smouldering wreckage of the awful World We Knew album that Sinatra could still place such a masterpiece? The 60s weren't kind to Frank. He seemed a shadow of his former self, but here he summons a rare victory from the slavering jaws of defeat. 166 Promised Land by Chuck Berry Chuck Berry was the flagship of youth aspirationalism in the 1950s, but here he looks at freedom on a grander, vaster, nationwide scale with one of rock's great tall tales. And after a long spell in pokey, freedom meant an awful lot to Chuck Berry. 165 You'll Never Get to Heaven If You Break My Heart by Dionne Warwick. At the risk of oversharing, this song, albeit the stylistics cover, was playing on the radio the first time I ever kissed my high school sweetie. Well, one of them, anyway. Alfie's Theme by Sonny Rollins. The saxophone colossus and his impossibly swinging London meets Birdland merger with the centrepiece of the film that made Michael Caine a superstar. It wasn't funny that time. 163, Fun 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 by the Beach Boys. Eternally joyous stuff from the Beach Boys and surely one of their most famous songs. It ameliorates the sorry burdens of the soul and prompts an immediate sing-along. It's the myth of the pre-rock 60s encapsulated in one song perfectly. 162, Sick and Tired, Billy Thorpe. Australian rock has possibly no greater legend than Billy Thorpe an artist who simply refused to let trends kill off his career. From child star, brash pop singer heard here, to schmaltzy balladeer, to long-haired sweaty rocking festival freak, to singer-songwriter. Every Australian rock fan lost a good friend when he passed away in 2007. Anyway, Anyhow, Anywhere by The Who. This is the raison d'etre of The Who, the clever, slightly anarchic, sonically vast but pop-rooted singles. And Anyway, Anyhow, Anywhere is one of the most fascinating of all of that impressive singles catalogue. 160. Hi Ho Silver Lining by Jeff Beck. 
for a hot minute between leaving the Yardbirds and forming the first of various Jeff Beck groups. Jeff Beck was a pop star. Problem was, he couldn't sing and he couldn't take being a pop star very seriously at all. The guitar solo on this was once voted in Guitar World back in the mid 90s to be both the worst guitar solo ever and the third best. Rain by the Beatles. The best Beatles B-side, the A-side was Paperback Writer. This is Ringo's tour de force with the band. There are still egregious boobs who will tell you that he couldn't play the drums properly. The defence submits Rain and rests its case. 158. Check Mr. Popeye by Eddie Bowe. Amongst the New Orleans greats, only Fats Domino released more music than Eddie Bowe, who's done so on more than 40 different labels. I find that hard to believe. Eddie's supple voice walks him through this classic New Orleans funk vamp, complete with some very tasty piano from, I think, Dr. John himself. Montague Terrace in Blue, a Walker original from his solo debut. This song starts out with an intimate sophistication before exploding into a wall of sound and offensive noise in the chorus. Everything I do gonna be funky from now on by Lee Dorsey. And so indeed it was. Lee Dorsey's much sampled classic heralded the beginning of the third wave of great New Orleans R&B. 155, I got a dance to keep from crying, that man Smokey Robinson and his miracles again. Holland Dozier Holland must have shook their heads in disbelief when the greatest songwriter at Motown picked this song above his own. But you can see why, an up-tempo groover and a vast improvement over their previous single Mickey's Monkey, saying that that did make the top 10, which, like so many of Holland Dozier Holland's songs with the Supremes, hides heartache behind a foot tapping beat. 154, Milwaukee, Here I Come, George Jones and Brenda Carter. Jones at his rollicking best, sending up both the Opry and himself. Brenda Carter gets in on the fun on a song covered by Dolly Parton, Jimmy Martin and old Johnny Prine. Mush Canada. Jorge Ben, a quintessentially Brazilian record calling out on the people to come out in the samba. Samba was the party music of people in Brazil, whereas Bossa Nova was seen as more middle class. Ben is in his most soulful voice here, and his scat at the end is a thing of wonder to be beheld. 152, Till the End of the Day by The Kinks. The final of the Kinks AC30 shredding blasters, this 1965 slice of power pop ushered in the new Kinks, the louche and droll observers of life's foibles, great and small. 151. Look Through Any Window by The Hollies. The Hollies music is like an ice cream on a hot day. Fresh, pleasant, revitalising. Holders of a run of 23 straight hits from their debut, which made the top 25, the Hollies were perfectly placed for the beat of the mythic Swinging London. 